Welcome to another video of Math Magic with Jen. Today we're going to keep talking about first grade story problems, but this time we're going to talk about the form of the problem. So the structure, um, and here it's called six types of problems. We're going to look at three addition, three subtraction. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so when students are, um, and it, honestly we're focusing on first grade, but it could be second, third, fourth, it doesn't really matter, but you want to kind of make sure you're practicing a particular form. So are they looking for the total? So we know what we start with, we know what we join to it, but I wanna know how many total I have. Are we looking for how many we started with? So is that an unknown, but we know how many we add and then the total? Um, or is it something missing in the middle? Like we know how many we start with, how many we end with, but we're not sure what happens somewhere in the middle. So that idea of the missing number is what we're going to talk about. So where that missing number occurs is important as well as if the problem is talking about addition or subtraction, okay? So even though we typically think of math facts, um, addition and subtraction facts um, together, I mean, yes, they are opposites and we want them to think of um, pairs of facts that match each other, like one plus five is six minus one is five, right? We're, we want them to get there, but they're not there yet. So we need to kind of start with, hey, what stories are talking about adding and joining versus what problems are talking about taking away, all right? So we want them to kind of really think about the words and what those words mean. So we're gonna first talk about adding. And for my um, information uh, that, that I have, we're gonna talk about it as add to. Um, so this is objects that are joining and I call them objects because it could be people, it could be animals, it could be crayons, it could be cookies. I mean, whatever it is that we're talking about, okay? So if our story talks about adding, joining, coming together, no one's leaving, right? Leaving subtraction, um, then these are, these are addition problems. Okay. So um, the first type that we're going to talk about is add to result unknown. So what this is talking about when I call it add to result unknown is that we're looking for the total. So the story tells us what we begin with, tells us how many are joining, and I want to know the total value. So as you can see from the structure of this problem, it says three butterflies were in the garden, two more butterflies joined them. How many total butterflies? Now, the reason why the form matters is because this one is probably the easiest addition problem to, to start off with is this form of what's the total, okay? And you probably wanna practice a lot of these if you're creating your own worksheets, your own activities, you wanna make sure that you're always doing a known number, another number I know, I'm looking for the total. Okay, so these are add to, because we're adding, result unknown. So result is referring to this last box. So the last box is called the result. At least for teachers, we're calling it the result. Whether the students are thinking of it in that form, that's up to you. But us as instructors are thinking total result is what I'm looking for. Okay, there are two more forms. And to me, these are the harder forms. Um, not like um, impossible to solve, but I would start with the results unknown. And then I'd probably go to change unknown, okay? So change unknown is saying we're looking for the middle number. So we know how many we start with. So this we know. We know how many we're going to start with. We know how many we're going to end with. What I don't know is the change that's happening in between. So let me read this problem with you. So three butterflies were in the garden. So we know we're starting with three. Some very generic, some more butterflies join them. How many? I don't know yet. If there were seven total, so again, we know what we're ending with. How many joined in the middle? So again, the idea is I start with a number, I end with a number. I wanna know that middle change that's happening. So that's why this is called a change unknown. Now, by the way, for those who are thinking, whoa, would my student solve this using this equation format? They might be using the linking cubes, picture models, number bonds, right? So I'm not saying they're gonna fill in these blanks right out the gate, okay? It'd be awesome if they did. But I'm just saying that we're talking about the form. So even if they're using those linking cubes or picture models, the idea is that we as teachers know they're starting with a number, they're ending with a number. We wanna know what that changes in between. Add to start unknown says it all. We don't know what we're starting with. 
but we do know how many joined and how many total we have. So we are looking for the number at the beginning. So here it says some butterflies were in the garden. One more butterfly joined them. If there are six total butterflies, how many were at the beginning? So again, um, as an instructor, if we are going to be creating worksheets and we want to practice this idea over and over again, we're going to have a generic number that we're not sure of at the beginning. We're going to add a specific number and tell them how many total. So maybe we want to talk about some kids were playing in a park, five more join them. If there are 10 total kids, right? So general sum in the middle, we're being specific. And at the end, we're being specific. So this is the start unknown. Subtraction. So um, again, in the world that, that I live in, subtraction, um, when I'm categorizing these problems, I call them a take from because things are leaving or taking things from a pile. Um, so subtraction problems are going to be talking about things leaving, okay? Giving away, walking away, whatever it is, okay? So when we are talking about that, that means our operation is subtraction. Okay, so the easiest form to talk about is take from result unknown. So result again means the total. So that's what I'm looking for. So I know the first number. I know the second number. I'm looking for the total that is remaining. So these are the easiest in both the adding world and the subtracting world as looking for that last number, but you know the first two. So here I've got five frogs were in a pond, two frogs hopped away, how many are left? Again, we might have the modeling with linking cubes, with number bonds, picture models, but we want them to be thinking about that this is subtraction, things are leaving, because we do want them to get to the point where they are thinking um, mathematically of five minus two equals three. We have two more forms of take from. So we've got take from change unknown. So change refers to that middle value. So this middle is what's called the change. Okay, the end is called the result. The beginning is the start. So maybe I'll write that up here. Start. Change. Result. And I wrote a plus or minus because this language works whether you're talking about addition or subtraction, okay? All right, so take from change unknown means that we have the number we start with, we know what number we end with, it's that middle value I don't know. So six frogs were in a pond, some frogs hopped away, so this is my generic sum, not sure, but I do know there are two left, okay? Again, awesome if students thought, oh, six minus four is two, but again, we might be modeling it with our six. <clears throat> that we started off with. We know that two are left, so this is what I'm left with. They are still here. These are the ones that hopped away. Beautiful. Now, our last form that we're gonna talk about is take from start unknown. So this is saying that we don't know how many we're beginning with, but we do know how many left and how many are at the end, okay? So some frogs were in a pond, I don't know how many. I do know that four hopped away. And if there are three frogs left, then I need to know how many I started with at the beginning. All right, so again, take from is referring to subtraction. The change unknown, the start unknown, the result unknown is talking about where that spot is. And if you're keeping up with me, which I hope you are, there are three for addition, three for subtraction. So all three are Add to, start unknown, change unknown, result unknown, okay? And then the three for take from are take from, result unknown, change unknown, start unknown. So they're three of three. Okay, do you need to go back and review this? Please do. I've been doing this for a while, so I know the lingo. It's kind of weird, okay? So you might want to, if I go back for a second, you might want to just make sure you've got this with the verbiage. That will help you try to figure out of, oh, okay, she wants me to make up some problems where the starts are known. Okay, she wants me to make up some problems where the changes are known. Okay, you know, so that way you can frame where you're missing pieces. So why is this important, you might be wondering. Um, 
for me as a teacher, it's important because I want to make sure I'm not just making up things on the fly and causing chaos in my room. So if we're working on a bunch of results unknown problems and I decide to make up one that is a start unknown, students might freak out. Okay, so it's kind of like, so I know in my brain, oh, I want to make sure I'm repetitive and practice this particular type of problem for a while before we switch gears, okay? Maybe we do want to throw them off and switch gears, but then we might want to have a conversation of how is it different from what we've been doing, right? Okay, now what I like to talk about also is how do you make up your own problems? Well, for me, it's um, using the generic word sum, right? <laughs> So when I'm looking for trying to write a problem, um, if it's a change unknown or start unknown, we're going to use this kind of phrase of sum. Now you can use other words in its place, but uh, some sort of vague word where we're not specifically stating how many are there. So for example, let's just say we wanted to do an add to change unknown. So in my brain right away, okay, what I'm thinking is, and here it is in this uh, sentence, but what I'm thinking is, Number, I don't know, number. So I know how many to start with, I know how many to end with, I need to be vague in the middle, that's what the students are gonna be solving, okay. Now you may be noticing that my number sums are really, really small. I've basically just been practicing with sums to 10. Yeah, you can decide how big you wanna go. Are, are your students ready to do two digit addition, right? Are you guys doing some of that? Then you can make more complicated, um, Equations. But for me right now, I'm working with sums up to 10, basically. So in this example, um, I'm talking about Mrs. Ramirez. She has five books. A friend gives her some more books. So this is my generic, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you how many total she has. If she has a total of eight books, then how many books did her friend give her? So again, this is kind of what I'm thinking is, oh, I need to start with a number. So I want to start with the number five. I'm going to end with the number eight. We're going to talk about some in the middle. And that's what the students are going to solve. So let's practice at least one more. We'll see how this goes. So if we want to do, um, oh, we just did add to change unknown. So we just did one. This is like the Mrs. Ramirez problem. But maybe we'll want to do a take from start unknown. Okay. So I want to do take from a subtraction. Start unknown is saying that I'm not going to tell the students in the problem what I'm starting with. But I will tell them how many left. And I will tell them the total. Okay. Now, for this problem I'm going to make up, let's say that I uh, have, let's see, we take away three and we still have six left. Okay. So now I need to write a story. So what's our story going to be? Is it going to be about kids? Is it going to be about cookies? It's going to be wh whatever you want to do. So here maybe I'll say, um, uh, hi. I don't know why that's not writing. We'll try that one more time. Let's go, Mr. Jones has some, right? Generic, some pencils on his desk. All right. Three pencils. are taken away to be used by students. As you can tell my wordsmithing's not the best, so feel free and be a better writer than I am. I'm a math teacher, but I'm doing my best. So three, three pencils are taken away to be used by students. Um, if there are Six pencils uh, still on the desk. Then how many uh, were there at the beginning? And if you are feeling that that was painful for watching me write sentences, I am with you. Okay. 
it's not my strength to just write sentences on the fly. Um, when I'm creating worksheets and things, I'll, I'll write it and then I'll go back and edit it and make sure that it's clear and things like that. But you get the gist that we're having a sum is our generic start. I've got a specific number I'm saying leave and then I'm telling you how many end. We need to know what's at the beginning. Okay, now we're almost done. I wanna talk about um, some things that you could also do. Like I was brainstorming in my head of, okay, let's say that our students have been practicing this for a month. They need a little bit more excitement. Maybe they um, are given a sheet of story problems and a stack of dominoes. And so they would need to grab dominoes to match this picture. So here um, we have nine minus three equals six. So nine minus three equals six, that's gonna also relate to the um, equation three plus six is nine. So maybe they're gonna look for this domino. Or maybe we wanna have them do a domino with the nine and the three or whatever it is, okay? I'm just brainstorming on the fly. Now, if you're wondering how did you know, Jen, to do the three and the six domino, because those are the two numbers I have is a three and a six, okay? And you could have students kind of choose dominoes and see if this works. You could also maybe think, Jen, I think your idea needs a little bit of flushing out. That's fair, completely fair. Um, but I'm just trying to get you to brainstorm of different things you can bring into the classroom to try and engage and make learning. That's all it is. We want students to like math because math is building critical thinking skills, okay? So we want them to be good at it. All right, with that, that is the end of my video. What you wanna make sure you're practicing other than our six types of problems, right? The add to, there's three of those. The take from, three of those. Um, and then, of course, my previous video on teaching tools of linking cubes, picture models, number bonds. Did you get all that? Um, but good luck. We're going to be moving to harder problems, second grade edition problems using, um, well, we'll be using lots of tools. You can check it out. That's going to be my next set of videos is on second grade edition and subtraction. So keep an eye out for it. Until then. Best of luck. I hope you have a good day and keep working on math. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.